Light Church, have I got good news for you today. We're going to talk about know now. And what I found interesting about the word know, uh, knowledge, knowing, or acknowledgement, that's sandwiched inside of that word know is the word now. And we're going to concentrate on what do you know now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16. Wherefore, henceforth, know we know man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. I was brought up and grew up with a limited knowledge of who God is and how he operates, what the truth is. I didn't know. I had an I had ideas and thoughts, but I didn't know until it was revealed to me personally. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's where you want to be, walking in a newness of life. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ that be reconciled to God. Now then, now you're able to to be an ambassador, representative of Christ, when you understand who Christ is, when you have this personal revelation. Because Matthew eleven twenty seven 27 talks about, no man knows who the Father is but the Son, and who the Son is but the Father, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. No man knows. No man knows. You don't know. You can't know. In fact, if you go back in 2 Corinthians, in chapter 3, it talks about a veil, uh, 3.15. But even unto this day when Moses read, the veil is a part of their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. And in verse 14, the veil is done away in Christ. Romans 8.1 talks about that. There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ. You have to know who Christ is to understand and acknowledge this mystery. Um, 1 Corinthians 2 as well. Talks about verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they have known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So, folks, if you're going to go deep, it takes the Spirit to go beyond the limitations of the flesh. Years ago, there was a movie came out called Contact, where they were dealing with an, uh, a so-called intelligent aliens. And they couldn't figure out how to make contact with this until one day this person had a revelation. He said, well, in order to know one, understand one, and get to know them, you have to understand their language. And they speak in three-dimensional. And so by that, they were able to make contact with this alien being and understand what they were. the message was. You have to have the revelation of Christ in order to move forward in your walk. Otherwise, it's veiled. And that's why we see so many silly religions and doctrines of men, dead works that don't work. And... For what man, verse 11, for what man knows the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. Now, okay, folks, now, let's, let's see what the Lord has to offer. Now we receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know 
the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in words, which man's wisdom teach, which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing or explaining spiritual things with spiritual people. Is basically what they're saying there. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish as none of them, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So when you see the word know, acknowledgement, it means to become fully acquainted with. Have you become fully acquainted with the Lord? Well, you won't unless you have the mind of Christ, which as we go on here in verse 15, but he that is spiritual judges or discerns all things. He's able to discern things, but yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. <laughs> Without the mind of Christ, folks, well, your enmity, the carnal mind is enmity. You cannot know the things of God. You cannot understand the things he's made available. If we go back a little ways in Romans 6, verse 3, know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. So here's, this is what you call us the real baptism. John baptized with water, but you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Well, the only way you can worship our Lord is in spirit and truth. So why not stay in the realm of the spirit? Let's get rid of the old. I don't know why people, in fact, the other day, somebody actually claimed there were three baptisms. And your Bible is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So one and done, folks. Keep it simple. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with it. The old man's got to go. But that's the only way you're going to know is when the old man goes. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So moving forward, henceforth, we just saw that earlier in 2 Corinthians 5, henceforth. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies, and more death hath no more dominion in him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he lives, he lives unto God. So here we go again. Now, knowing. We're becoming fully acquainted. We're able to recognize and perceive who the Father is through the Son. It's Christ in you is your only hope of glory. And folks, again, we talk about knowing. What time is it spiritually? Well, if you go ahead a little bit in Romans 13, 11, that knowing the time, that now is a time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly in the day, not in rioting, drunkenness, chambering, wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust thereof. So what time is it now? And now is when you're able to know who the Father is, as well as the Son. It's a packaged deal. Of course, we know Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is. Now. What time is it? Now. Folks, if you stay in the now, then you're able to know. And you will know now what the will of the Father is for you today. What he has planned for you. Ephesians 3. I'm going to start at verse 13. Wherefore, Paul's writing, I desire you fate not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. So the path of life is going to be, there's going to be opposition, folks. Um, it's a narrow path. It's a straight path. It's a hard path. And few there be that find it. Few are willing to go beyond what the norm is, religion, and allow, to well, to be baptized into his death. In order to live, you have to die. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, 
that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Folks, you don't haven't experienced what strength is until it's taken place in the inner man. That's where the action is. You got all these people pointing people to the outward. Oh, everything's happening in the outward, you know, and your answer is not in the outward. It's the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you be able, that you may, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know, folks, what do you know? You want to know this stuff so that when you stand before the Father, you're able to give an answer of what you know and not what you think or what somebody else has told you. What do you know? The love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Why not? Why not take what's available? It's on the table. It's there for the taking. Grab it. It's yours. That's why the Father sent the Son and died on your behalf. So you could have access. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He tells you that in, in Luke. Now, oh, here we go again. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Christ is the power and wisdom of God. Without Christ, you're weak. You're powerless. So folks, the answer is within. It's that revelation of Christ. Um, we could go back to Romans 16 again. We're back to the book of Romans in chapter 16. 24, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Now to him that is of power. Notice when we're talking about Christ, now we're, met, now we're talking about the power of God. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Uh, it tells you that um, 1 Corinthians 1, 24 tells you that. But to them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. You take Christ out of the equation. Why do you think the enemy is referred to as Antichrist? Well, he doesn't want to see the people operating in power and wisdom of God. You take that off the table. You ain't got, you, there's not much left, ladies and gentlemen. Now to him that has a power, Romans 16, 25, to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was keeps, kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. By the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known. There we see in that word known is the word now to all nations for the obedience of faith. That revelation of the mystery allows you access to the Father. Remember, there's only one meteor between God and man, and man, Christ Jesus. Christ has always got to be involved. If Christ is not involved, that's why the teaching is there. Like, Jesus, 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 the name of Jesus. What about Christ? Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why are we leaving Christ out of the teachings and the equations? Well, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolish. The cross of Christ. People don't want to hear that. But in order to resurrect, you have to die. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. Colossians 1. And Paul talks about, in verse 25, Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery. Mark 4.11 talks about, unto you is given to know the mystery, to become acquainted with. If you want to fully know God, you have to know the mystery of the gospel. If people aren't preaching Christ and understand the mystery of the gospel, they have no business preaching at all which has been hid from ages the mystery which has been hid from ages and generations but now is made manifest to his saints to whom god would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the gentiles which is christ in you the hope of glory remember peter talked about the book of peter be ready to give an answer to any man that would ask of the reason of the hope that is in you well if you don't know who christ is then you won't know who that hope is Whom we preach warning of man, teaching of man, and all wisdom, we 
may present every man perfect in Christ. Okay, I got ahead of myself. Verse 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among you, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the only hope of glory. <laughs> it's nothing else is going to get you home. But that revelation, that name, which is above every name, Christ in you. Jesus was a man. Remember, John 3 talks about you have to be born of the flesh and of the spirit. So Jesus was a man. First born again man with the spirit of Christ within him and demonstrated the power and wisdom of God. What could be done if you allowed God to have his way? And as we go on here in Colossians 2.2, 2, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement. There's a word acknowledgement. We see no and now of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. What? Isn't it interesting today towards the end that mankind is chasing after the outward riches of what they think is going to bring peace? The Bible talks about uh, the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and lusts of other things. That's what chokes the word. And ladies and gentlemen, what do you know now? Do you know the mystery of the gospel? Have you tapped into that power and wisdom of God? And as I look at 1 John 2.20, but you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. He's Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. If you deny the Son, you have not the Father. <laughs> Folks, the church, many believers today, so-called believers, are in denial because they don't know what the true hope of the gospel is. And folks, if you stay in the now, then you will know what's been made available to you by the Spirit. So now that you now that you know now what to do, go walk in victory that the Lord intended for you. God bless and keep the faith.